Good evening, everyone. This is Wayne, and this is the video version of the Trade Report for Wednesday, May 16th, 2018. Well, the markets got started off on a bullish foot today and went a little higher than I was expecting, but it's all good. Stay tuned to find out more. Greetings, everyone, and thank you once again for joining me as I go over the action and activity from the day in the financial markets. Well, this chart by now has probably become something that you can recognize from uh, 100 paces. And yes, this is the VIX. And I'm showing you this first and foremost because the VIX was a little bit higher in the pre-market today, and it looked like we might get a little bit more downside, which is, it that was one of the potentials I was looking for. I was predominantly looking for, if you recall from yesterday's video, a sideways move with maybe a little bit of downside or a little bit of upside. There really wasn't a particular bias in the market. So, you know, I was just kind of looking at a relatively tight trading range of a day today with, you know, a, a relatively, uh, ah, kind of a passe kind of trading day, you know, just kind of a maybe a 10, 12 point trading range. And that is actually what we got in the uh, extended session, the overnight session, the pre-market. We traded in about a 12 point range. And when the market opened, and I'll show you this, I really started off with a flourish and a bit of a surprise. But in the great scheme of things, what we need to look at and understand what is happening is related to the VIX. And yesterday, of course, we got that huge pop, which was really overdone. The VIX moved way higher than the market would have otherwise indicated it should have based on the price action to the downside. So that just tells me that the algorithms and the computer-driven trading models were really engaged yesterday. They were in, they, they were in charge, if you will. And I expected that to be part and parcel of how today played out as well. And, and it did, but significantly less so. There was more institutional uh, buying today. And when humans and proactive uh, models come into play, in other words, when people and humans are in charge versus pre-triggered algorithms and the computer-driven trading models, you get a little bit smoother action in the market. Now, we did have some twitchiness today because the algos weren't completely gone, but the reintroduction of the human element brought this market a little bit more, I would call it calm and reason as it relates to price action. So what happened as a result of that in the VIX was that we had some lower prices in the VIX. Now, this particular candlestick pattern is known as a bearish harami. Now, it requires confirmation, which will be tomorrow, but it invites the idea of going lower. So with the VIX going lower, we look at the broader market or the uh, indexes, the stock market, to go higher. Now, whether or not that plays out remains to be seen. We have two more days left in this week, and this is monthly options expiration week. And Starting tomorrow, we're going to be getting some institutional action, more so than we even did today. And the, 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 big, the, the big mutual fund uh, traders, the big institutional investors, the, the fund managers, people who manage billions and trillions of dollars are going to be going to be working their portfolios, let's put it that way. And it will... It'll bring some action to the financial markets. If nothing else, some volume. But typically when volume is involved, action is close to follow. So if we are to look at the VIX and make a prognosticative guesstimate of what tomorrow is going to look like, I would say we're going higher. Now that was my prognosis from yesterday. But Today's trading and today's price action is actually what I was looking for for tomorrow. So what does that mean? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in a place where I still believe we'll go higher tomorrow, 
but maybe not as high as I was originally expecting it to because we went so high today. So yeah, I'm not in I'm not in any particular camp of conviction that I'm feeling like, you know, it's just a green light and we're going to, you know, scream to the upside. I don't think we're going to get sideways action and I I don't think we're going lower tomorrow. But I think the upside is going to be a little muted. I think we're going to have a day of maybe calm before the storm. And then once tomorrow's done, we'll have a much better perspective of what Friday may look like. So that's the VIX. Now, today's um, S&P futures and also, of course, NASDAQ, Dow and Russell futures uh, came on very strong. In fact, I should probably show you one more chart. Um, and that chart is of the uh, Russell because the Russell made a new intraday high today. In fact, I think it may have even closed at a new high. Um, yes, it did. The Russell closed at a new all-time record high today. So, you know, it's kind of an interesting sidebar to this market. It, you know, in, in days past, or I should say in months past, whenever the market made a new high, it was, you know, celebration. And, you know, it's like, here we go again. You know, this is, you know, the market's making a new high. Well, today it was not met with a lot of fanfare. It was like, uh, you know, oh, by the way, the Russell just made a new all-time high. Okay. So it all, it not only made a new all-time closing high, it made a new all-time intraday high, which of course I suppose goes without saying. But that being said, one of two things here, Either this market has come too far too fast in comparison to the other indexes because none of them are close to their uh, to their all time highs, the Dow, the Nasdaq, and the S and P, or is it because the S and P sorry, it, or is it because the Russell has so many energy names in it and that oil prices have really shot to the upside? In fact, after today's inventory report, oil just you know, really pop to the upside. In fact, we can just take a real quick look at crude oil here. And uh, it ended it ended the day a little higher, but uh, you can see how it's really kind of held its own here. And after today's inventory report, it, it actually shot up pretty nicely. I would say um, a move up to 7,209 and then possibly even a move up to 7,372 would be in the works. But Oil is a funny beast. You just never know what it's going to do. It's got a mind of its own. It's very fundamentally based. Um, geopolit geopolitics come into play when we talk about uh, whether supply or demand will be the, uh, the, 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 the dominant metric when we're evaluating uh, what's happening with and what will be happening to uh, crude oil prices going forward. So, you know, right now, it's moving higher and it looks like it's going to continue higher. That being said, we'll just take it a day at a time and see how it all plays out. Um, I'm looking at possibly getting long. Um, and we'll see how that, we'll, you know, they're, they're, I'm in no hurry. Let's put it that way. So anyway, wanted to show you that because crude oil is, uh, you know, having a very good run and oil names and energy names make up a lot of the Russell to the Russell 2000. So the Russell at new all time highs and uh, the Dow and the NASDAQ and the uh, S and P are all, uh, you know, kind of looking, looking on and uh, doing their own thing, but uh, are not anywhere near their all time highs. In fact, if we take a quick look at the uh, S and P here, you can see where of course, and we know this one by heart as well, here is the uh, all time high from back on, oh, when was that? It was January. I'll look at the date just a second. And here's where we close today. So we've got a long stretch. Uh, we closed today at 27.22.46. And our all-time high was uh, 28, 2875. Is that what it was? 28. Uh, oh, I, I'll, let me just take a look here real quick instead of guessing. All-time high was uh, 28.72.87, and uh, close today was 27.22. So, you know, about 160 points to go in the S&P before we get to uh, 
uh, challenging the all-time high. So that's a long way to go. So anyway, you can see uh, by this chart that we uh, we made some pretty decent move uh, movement today um, in the S and P. And if we take a look at the 15-minute chart. The uh, overnight session was kind of lope to de lope. You know, we had ups and downs and all arounds. And then just before the market opened, we had a nice push to the upside with a little bit of a pullback and then a very nice move back up and then some sideways action. And right about here, it looked like we were going to break out and head up to 2731. And then the algorithms got a hold of the market and just kind of lopped it off here. It looked like we might even get might even get down to maybe uh, you know this area right here. But then the algorithms came in again and bought it back up. And now you can see it tipping just a little bit in the extended session. But right now, we're in quiet time, so nothing's happening. So very nice day in the S&P. Um, the S&P closed uh, 11 points higher. The Dow closed up 62.5 points. The NASDAQ closed up 46.5 points. And uh, the Russell, as we know, all-time highs closed up uh, 16 points. Very nice move out of the Russell. Um, again, I'm looking for upside action tomorrow. Uh, I, I, I just, at this point, I'm waiting, I'm waiting to see what happens in the overnight session. And that will probably give us a little bit of an indication as to what we can expect going forward. Uh, the Asian and European markets are still kind of weighing this North Korea, South Korea thing. Um, also, interest rates are are beginning to uh, become more and more important because the 10-year Treasury note has once again kind of come back into prominence. In fact, I believe the 10-year, in fact, I can bring up a chart of that, and I think I should. The 10-year uh, Treasury note was talked about for the longest time getting to the the three uh, percent uh, range. Now, this is a uh, this is a tracking mechanism for the ten-year Treasury note, and it has closed at a uh, I think it's the highest level since 2011. Uh, but it closed at well, its high of the day was 30.95, uh, which basically means that the ten-year yield is now 3.095 percent, almost 3.1, which is unbelievably high. Yesterday's high print was, it was basically where today's close was, 3.095. So, you know, we're really up there. But we also have a pinch in the Ichimoku cloud. This very interesting area right here in the Ichimoku, it is telling me that there's a very real potential that we could begin coming down on the 10-year yield, which would stimulate stock prices. So, We'll see what happens if that plays out. But that is the number one thing kind of driving the bus today, if you will, as it relates to stock prices. And the fact that we went higher today, even in light of and in spite of that, um, really tells me that this market has transitioned itself to a more bullish stance. The sentiment in the market is now... Um, now, now leaning more toward the bullish side. So we've got two more days till monthly options expiration Friday. And until then, I think we need to just kind of operate from the stance of observation still. Uh, we have a day like today that comes on the heels, on the heels of a day like yesterday. And, uh, you know, we, we have to look at it and say, okay, we'll take it. But it was a little bit of a surprise. This much uh, price action to the upside kind of came out of the blue, but it, as I said earlier, tells me that the human element is beginning to come back into this market and not necessarily challenge the algorithms, but to supplant them. So there we are. Um, this, I'm going to just show you what an algorithmic trading bar at its finest looks like. And when I say bar, I mean a 15-minute bar. So we've got this 15-minute bar right here. And this was the 15-minute bar just, this, this was the closing bar of the, uh, of the trading session. So this bar, I want to get, uh, let's see, it was 
The low was uh, 2717 and a quarter. The high was 272275. So it was a five and a half point candle. Uh, not a huge range, but you can see how it really dropped and then it just zoomed back up again. So you have these these pops and drops, we call them in the market that are in the in the session that are strictly the purview of algos. So and that's very difficult to trade and virtually impossible, actually. So we just kind of observe and maintain our positions and our hedges and watch the VIX. That's how you trade a market that really can't be uh, evaluated effectively due to the um, the unpredictability of the the twitchiness associated with algorithms. But in the great scheme of things, overall and in retrospect, today was a very good day. So I'm looking for not necessarily a repeat tomorrow, but I am looking for additional upside in the market. And we'll see if it comes to pass. A new high in the Russell. Anything, any new high in the Russell is another new all-time high. And if energy continues to get bought, we will see another new all-time high in the Russell. And the Russell could be a portent for what we see in the other indexes. In other words, higher prices and potential moves up to and challenging their all-time highs at some point in the not-too-distant future. Probably not this week. So with that, trade safe. Trade what you see if you, if you choose to trade at all. Good night and good trading.